Some of these aircrafts look like they were made in another galaxy. With their sleek shapes and alien designs, you'd swear they came from a sci-fi movie and not from Earth. But believe it or not, they're real. They've flown, and some are already in service. The B-21 Raider is America's newest stealth bomber, built to replace the legendary B-2 Spirit. Its role is to slip past the world's toughest air defenses, strike anywhere on the planet, and return unseen. What makes the B-21 unique is how far stealth has advanced since the 1990s. Every curve and material is designed to absorb or deflect radar. Its engines are buried deep within the body, hiding heat from infrared sensors. And unlike the B-2, the Raider is built with digital open systems architecture, meaning it can be upgraded with new weapons, drones, or AI without a redesign. Preferred because of its versatility, it's capable of both nuclear and conventional strikes, making it the backbone of America's future bomber fleet. Its specs are still classified, but it's expected to have intercontinental range, carry precision-guided munitions, and operate autonomously if required. The B-21 is famous as the first bomber designed for the age of cyber warfare and space-age stealth. The Chengdu J-20 is China's first operational stealth fighter and a symbol of its military rise. It's built to control airspace, hunt rival fighters, and it can even threaten high-value targets like tankers and EWS aircraft. Capable of cruising at supersonic speeds, carrying advanced long-range missiles, and blending stealth with agility, the J-20 gives China reach across the Pacific. Its most famous feature is its length. At over 67 feet, it's larger than most Western fighters, allowing more fuel and weapons. This makes it ideal for long patrols. Preferred by China's Air Force for its intimidation factor, the J-20 is deployed along contested regions like the South China Sea. It's famous for being the first non-American stealth fighter to enter large-scale service, showing the world that stealth dominance is no longer U.S.-only territory. The NASA X-59 Quest is not a fighter or bomber. It's a revolution in passenger flight. Its role is to prove that supersonic travel over land can return by eliminating the sonic boom. Capable of flying at Mach 1.4, the X-59 uses its extra-long nose and sculpted body to break up shockwaves. Instead of the deafening boom that once grounded the Concorde, the X-59 produces only a gentle thump that is quiet enough to pass over cities without disruption. It's preferred because, if successful, airlines could bring back supersonic routes without restrictions, cutting flight times in half. Its most famous spec is its 30-foot nose cone, which eliminates the cockpit windshield. Instead, pilots fly using advanced external cameras. The X-59 is famous because it could unlock the dream of supersonic travel for millions of passengers, not just the military elite. The SR-72, nicknamed the Son of Blackbird, is the rumored successor to the legendary SR-71. Built by Lockheed Martin, its mission would be strategic reconnaissance and strike at hypersonic speeds. Projected to fly beyond Mach 6, the SR-72 would be capable of crossing the Atlantic in under two hours. It has a turbine-based combined cycle engine that could operate like a jet at low speeds and switch to scramjet propulsion at hypersonic speeds. No missile defense system today could intercept something moving this fast. It would redefine first strike capability and surveillance. Its most famous spec is its speed. If achieved, it would be the fastest aircraft in history. The SR-72 is famous for its secrecy. Lockheed has confirmed test programs exist, but no prototype has been revealed publicly. It may already be flying in classified programs. The X-47B looks like a small stealth bomber but it was built for launching from aircraft carriers without a human pilot. First flown in 2011, this drone proved it could take off, land, and also refuel autonomously on a moving carrier deck which is one of the most complex tasks in aviation. Its flying wing design makes it stealthy, while its ability to operate without risking a pilot makes it ideal for dangerous missions. The X-47B carried weapons bays, advanced sensors, and precision strike capabilities, all while being fully unmanned, Though it remains a demonstrator, the lessons from the X-47B are feeding directly into the Navy's future carrier drones. It proved that autonomous stealth combat aircraft are already taking off from ships at sea. The Airbus Maverick is an experimental passenger aircraft with a radical design, a blended wing body where fuselage and wings merge into one. Its role is to test the future of commercial aviation efficiency. Capable of carrying passengers in a wide, open cabin, 
The Maverick's triangular shape reduces drag and increases fuel efficiency by up to 20%. Its most famous spec is its futuristic cabin, which is wide enough for creative seating layouts and even lounges. Airlines face rising pressure to cut emissions, and Maverick offers a way to do it without sacrificing range. Its most famous moment was its 2020 flight of a scaled demonstrator, proving the design is viable. The Maverick is famous not for military power, but for showing how tomorrow's airliners could look nothing like today's. The Sukhoi Su-57, NATO codename Felon, is Russia's first attempt at a true fifth-generation stealth fighter. Its role is to give Russia an answer to the US F-22 and F-35, blending stealth with raw supermaneuverability. Capable of supersonic cruise speeds, the Su-57 is powered by thrust vectoring engines that allow it to pull extreme maneuvers like tight turns and sudden climbs that few jets can match. Its internal weapons bays carry a mix of long-range missiles and precision bombs, while its advanced radar and infrared sensors give it situational awareness across the battlefield. Russia built it to dominate in close-range dogfights and to carry heavy payloads without losing agility. While its stealth isn't as refined as American jets, its ability to combine stealth with aerobatics makes it unique. The Su-57 is most famous for being deployed in limited numbers but meant to show that Moscow can still compete in the global stealth race. The Spike S-512 is a futuristic supersonic business jet designed to carry executives and VIPs across oceans in record time. Its role is to revive supersonic passenger travel, but in a private, quiet, and efficient form. Capable of Mach 1.6, the S-512 can cut flight times between New York and London down to just over three hours. Its most futuristic feature is the cabin that has no windows. Instead, long digital screens project live panoramic views from cameras outside or even display movies and presentations. This makes the fuselage lighter and more aerodynamic. It's designed to soften the sonic boom, allowing supersonic flight over land routes that were off-limits to Concord. For passengers, it offers luxury interiors and faster connections between continents. The S-512 is a glimpse of how the wealthy may cross the skies at twice the speed of sound. The next and final jet proves just how far technology can push the very limits of speed. NASA's X-43 Waverider is famous for being the fastest aircraft ever built. Its role was to prove scramjet propulsion could sustain hypersonic flight, and it succeeded. In 2004, the X-43 reached Mach 9.6, nearly 7,000 miles per hour. That's fast enough to cross the United States in under 30 minutes. Its scramjet engine works by compressing air at hypersonic speeds, eliminating the need for heavy turbines. The faster it goes, the more efficiently it flies. The X-43 proved hypersonic flight isn't science fiction. The data it gathered now fuels research into future hypersonic aircraft and weapons. Its famous spec of Mach 9.6 is still the world record for an air-breathing aircraft. The X-43 is remembered as the jet that didn't fight battles but opened a new frontier. It showed the world that hypersonic travel is real, and it's the next great leap in aviation. These aircrafts prove the future of aviation is already airborne. The question is, which of these will define the next era of flight? Tell us in the comments. When the Boeing 777 first rolled out, it wasn't just another airliner, it was a gamble. A jet designed to cross oceans with only two engines, something no one had tried at this scale before. To make it work, Boeing needed wings that were unlike anything seen on a passenger jet long enough to carry its weight, strong enough to bend without breaking, and efficient enough to make the numbers add up. This is the story of the Boeing 777's wings. When Boeing began sketching the 777, they had a challenge. Build a wing big enough for long-haul travel but efficient enough for two engines. Up until then, long-range aircrafts like the 747 relied on four engines to cross oceans. The 777 was meant to do the same job with just two, which meant its wings had to be longer and more efficient than anything before. Engineers settled on a wingspan of just over 199 feet for the first models. That number wasn't random. It was carefully calculated to balance lift and drag and gate compatibility at airports. The result was a perfectly judged wingspan that redefined what a twin jet could achieve. Airlines immediately recognized the advantage. The 777 could fly long-haul routes like Los Angeles to Tokyo with fewer engines and lower fuel burn. The wing became its silent powerhouse. At the heart of the 777's wings is its aerodynamic shaping, 
Boeing used supercritical airfoils which flattened the top curve of the wing. This subtle change reduces drag at high speeds, especially near Mach 0.84, the 777's typical cruising speed. It may not sound dramatic, but over thousands of flights, this design saves airlines millions in fuel costs. Another breakthrough was wing sweep. The 777's wings are swept back 31.6 degrees. This angle reduces drag while keeping stability at transonic speeds. Boeing had refined this sweep angle over decades, but the 777 pushed it further, blending efficiency with comfort. The 777 introduced advanced high-lift devices, including triple-slotted flaps that dramatically increase wing area during takeoff and landing. This meant a plane that was enormous in cruise could also handle relatively shorter runways safely. Combined with raked wingtips on later models, the 777's aerodynamics represented a careful dance between physics and practicality, one that still holds up today. The size of the 777's wings demanded materials that were strong, yet light, like a mix of advanced aluminum alloys, designed to resist both stress and corrosion. At the time, composites weren't as widely used as they are today, so engineers pushed aluminum to its limits. The wing could flex dramatically in flight without cracking or weakening. Flexibility is not weakness, it's strength. The 777's wings can bend more than 20 feet upward at the tips during turbulence or stress. This flexibility absorbs loads that would otherwise shake the fuselage. Internally, spars run lengthwise, ribs give shape and stringers reinforce the skin. Together, these elements create a structure that's both light and incredibly tough. One of the biggest jobs of the 777's wings is simple. Generate enough lift to carry a fully loaded plane across the world, and the wings must do it efficiently. Every inch of drag is fuel wasted. The 777's wings were designed to maximize lift to drag ratio. The long span and carefully sculpted airfoil reduce turbulence around the tips, making the wing glide more smoothly through the air. This efficiency translates into longer range and lower costs. On top of that, the wings double as fuel tanks. Each wing can hold more than 23,000 gallons of fuel. That's nearly half the plane's total capacity stored inside the wings alone. Storing fuel here keeps the plane balanced and reduces stress on the fuselage. The combination of efficient lift and enormous fuel storage is what allows the 777 to cover routes like New York to Hong Kong nonstop. Few images capture the 777's engineering better than its wing flex tests. During certification, engineers bent the wings upward more than 24 feet before they finally snapped. That test proved the wings could endure extreme stress beyond anything they'd face in service. In normal flight, the 777's wings flex upward gracefully. This is especially visible from the cabin window, where passengers can watch the tips rise and fall with turbulence. It's a natural shock absorber. Instead of rigidly transferring forces into the fuselage, the wings bend and release energy smoothly. This strength also allowed Boeing to extend the 777 family into heavier versions. The 300ER and 200LR both rely on reinforced wings capable of lifting heavier loads and more fuel. The wings became not just aerodynamic tools, but structural lifelines for the entire aircraft. For passengers, that strength translates to smoother rides, and for airlines, it means reliability mile after mile. But how much can a 777's wings really bend in flight without breaking? Drop your guesses in the comments, and we'll come back to this at the end. When Boeing introduced the 777-300ER and 200LR, they didn't just make the fuselage longer or add more fuel. They gave the wings a major upgrade with raked wingtips. Unlike traditional vertical winglets, raked wingtips are extended sections of the wing that taper outward and back. On the 777, these add about 6.5 feet to each wing. The purpose is to reduce wingtip vortices. This improves fuel efficiency, better climb performance, and longer range. For airlines, this meant the ability to open ultra-long-haul routes profitably. For passengers, it meant fewer stops and more direct flights. The 777 wasn't the first to use raked wingtips, but it became the most iconic example of how effective they could be on large aircraft. Building wings as large as those on the Boeing 777 was a challenge, unlike anything Boeing had attempted before. For the first time in commercial aviation, the entire aircraft was designed digitally using computer-aided design software. This allowed engineers to model every part of the wing with incredible precision before a single piece of metal was cut. Spars run the length of the wing, connected by ribs and reinforced by stringers, creating a lightweight but incredibly tough box structure. 
Massive jigs were used in the Everett factory to hold each wing in place as sections were joined together with thousands of fasteners. Each completed wing stretched nearly 100 feet long and had to be transported carefully across the factory floor before being attached to the fuselage. The scale of this process was immense, but it allowed Boeing to produce wings that were not only enormous but also consistent in quality and performance. Takeoff and landing are where wings truly show their brilliance. The 777 is equipped with sophisticated high-lift systems, including triple-slotted trailing edge flaps and advanced leading edge slats. During takeoff, these devices extend to increase the wing's surface area and curvature. This creates more lift at slower speeds, which is essential for a heavy aircraft rolling down the runway. On landing, they extend even further, slowing the plane and allowing it to descend steeply and safely. The 777's flaps are among the largest and most complex ever fitted to a passenger jet. They stretch nearly the full length of the wing's trailing edge. Watching them deploy is like watching gears and panels working together to reshape the wing in seconds. Without these high-lift devices, the 777 would need impossibly long runways to operate. Instead, it can safely take off and land at airports all over the world, proving the genius of its wing engineering. Wings of this scale require constant monitoring and maintenance. Every 777 undergoes regular inspections where engineers check for signs of corrosion or damage from bird strikes and lightning. The wing's design makes inspections easier. Access panels allow technicians to look inside parts without dismantling major sections. Non-destructive testing techniques like ultrasound and X-ray scans detect hidden cracks before they become dangerous. What's remarkable is the durability. The 777's wings have proven to last decades with minimal structural issues. Their resilience comes from both design and maintenance. Airlines around the world rely on them for consistent performance, often clocking tens of thousands of flight hours before major overhauls. This combination of design strength and proactive care explains why the 777 remains one of the most reliable aircraft ever built. Its wings are not just marvels of design, but models of long-term dependability. The latest evolution of the 777's wings is its folding wingtips on the 777X. This is the first time a commercial airliner has been built with tips that fold up like a fighter jet's. Why? Because the 777X's wingspan is enormous at 235 feet with the tips extended. That's too wide for many airport gates. By folding up the last 11 feet of each wing, the 777X can fit into the same gate size as earlier 777s. But folding wingtips are more than a parking trick. The longer span increases efficiency and reduces drag, while the folding mechanism ensures compatibility with existing airports. The system is locked in place during flight with multiple safeguards, making it as secure as a fixed wing. This innovation is a glimpse into the future of aviation. By blending flexibility with efficiency, Boeing has shown how wing design can continue to evolve. The 777X isn't just an upgrade, it's a revolution built on decades of wing expertise. The wings of the Boeing 777 are the reason this aircraft changed aviation forever. They lifted a twin jet into the role of a global long hauler. Very few designs in aviation history have been this ambitious and successful. And to answer that question we asked earlier, a 777's wings can flex more than 20 feet upward during flight without damage, which turns turbulence into smooth motion for passengers. If you enjoyed this breakdown, give it a like, hit subscribe, and tell us in the comments. Which part of the 777's wings amazes you the most? Until next time, keep looking to the skies.